Many firearms in this world are well known for having brought their manufacturers to world recognition, such as AK-47, Kalashnikov, Glock, or Six Sewer. But there are also those devices that on the contrary brought the investors to ruin in the form of financial bankruptcy. So today we will discuss these devices that for one reason or another were rejected by the military police and the public service, going down in history as forgotten pieces of the vast industry. Hello everyone and welcome back to US Marines channel. In today's video, we are going to see six useless weapons that bankrupted their creators. Number six, the Rogak P-18. The Rogak P-18 was a copy of the Steyr GB service pistol. With some disagreement over whether it was unlicensed or just unfortunately made. Les Rogak was a Steyr distributor in Illinois who managed to acquire a set of plans for the GB pistol and put it into production before Steyr made examples were available in the US. On paper, the gun seemed quite impressive. A stainless steel 18 shot gas delayed military pistol in the late 1970s was something on the forefront of handgun development. Unfortunately, Rogak's manufacturing left a lot to be desired. When the authentic Steyr GB was an excellent pistol, despite losing to the Glock in Austrian military trials and to the Beretta in American military trials, the Rogak copy was quite poorly made. The fit on the gas delay system was too loose to actually hold gas pressure, resulting in the Rogak acting as a simple blowback pistol. To compensate for this, Rogak added a sort of fiber buffer stack in the receiver to reduce the slide battering on the frame, and ground off the extractor claw to prevent the rapid slide opening from tearing cartridges rims off. Numerous burrs, casting defects, and fit problems plagued the guns, to the extent that Steyr actually filed a legal suit to stop their manufacturer. Number 5. The Puckle Gun The Puckle Gun is probably best known as that thing that had round bullets for Christians and square bullets for Turks. But there is much more to it than just that. And in addition, the square bullet version was never actually built. James Puckle designed it in 1718 as a naval defensive weapon to help British vessels fight back against Ottoman pirates using fast and nimble small boats that could not be effective engaged with large cannons. Puckle's gun was a 9-shot repeater of the 1.25 bore on a flexible swiveling mount which could easily track the fastest marauder. The Puckle is basically a manual revolver, but its firing mechanism incorporates some clever functionality to allow a fast and smooth rate of fire. The gun was demonstrated in public in 1721 after being turned down by the Royal Navy and fired 63 shots in 7 minutes. Quite the feat at that time. The only sale appears to have been a private purchase of two guns for an expedition to the West Indies, however. While the Puckle gun was not a huge success on the battlefield, it does prove that gunsmiths were actively seeking a weapon with a higher rate of fire than the common musket. Many members of the anti-gun community in the United States argue that the Founding Fathers could not have anticipated modern weaponry's rate of fire when they wrote the Second Amendment. The existence of weapons like the Puckle Gun and the Girondoni Air Rifle prove that the gunsmiths of the 18th century not only anticipated semi and fully automatic weapons, they were actively trying to build them. Number 4. Dardic 1500 The Dardic 1500 was a magazine-fed revolver designed by David Dardic in the 1950s. His patent was granted in 1958, and somewhere between 40 and 100 of the guns were made in 1959 before the company went out of business in 1960. The concept was based around a triangular cartridge, a trowned, and a three-chambered open-sided cylinder. This wasn't really of direct benefit to a handgun, but instead was ideal for a high rate of fire machine gun where the system did not need to pull rounds forward or backward to chamber and eject them. 
In lieu of military machine gun contract, Dardic applied the idea to his sidearm. The Model 1500 held 15 rounds inside a blind magazine in the grip. It was chambered for a 38 caliber cartridge, basically the same as 38 Special Ballisticality. A compact Model 1100 was also made in a small number with a shorter grip and correspondingly reduced magazine capacity, 11 rounds. A carbine barrel stock adapter was also made. The guns were a complete commercial failure with low production and lots of functional problems. Today, of course, they are highly collectible because of the scarcity and their sheer mechanical weirdness. Sold for $4,888 in the December 2019 RIA Premier Auction. Number 3. USFA Zip 22 The USFA Zip 22, stylized as Zip, is a semi-automatic bullpup pistol chambered in 22 long rifle commercially introduced by the U.S. Firearms Manufacturing Company, or USFA, in 2013. Although given some praise for its innovative concept, affordability, and accuracy, it was widely panned for its frequent mechanical malfunctions, with failures to feed ammunition and eject spit casings being reported by a large number of shooters. The poor reliability of this gun made it a commercial failure, causing the eventual demise of the USFA in 2017. Number 2. Mars Automatic Pistol The Mars Automatic Pistol, also sometimes known as the Weebly Mars, was a semi-automatic pistol developed in 1900 by the Englishman Hugh Gabbett Fairfax and distributed by the Mars Automatic Pistol Syndicate, LTD, of Birmingham. It was manufactured first by Weebly and Scott, and later by small gun makers in Birmingham and London. Manufacture ceased in 1907. The Mars Automatic Pistol is noted for being available in a variety of calibers, 8.5mm, 9mm, and 45. These were all bottlenecked cartridges with a large charge of powder making the 45 version the most powerful handgun in the world at the time. It used a unique long recoil rotating bolt action which ejected spent cartridges straight to the rear, and the feed mechanism is unusual in that it pulls cartridges backwards out of the magazine and then lifts them up into the breech face. The Mars automatic pistol was rejected by the British War Office as a possible replacement for the Weebly and Weebly and Scott revolvers, then in service with the British Army because of the unacceptably powerful recoil, considerable muzzle flash, and mechanical complexity. The captain in charge of tests of the Mars at the Naval Gunnery School in 1902 observed, No one who fired once with the pistol wished to shoot it again. Shooting the Mars pistol was described as singularly unpleasant and alarming. It has since become a collector's item because of its rarity and as an example of the earliest developments in semi-automatic pistols. Number 1. Panker Jackhammer The Panker Corporation Jackhammer is a 12-gauge, blow-forward gas-operated bullpup automatic shotgun designed in 1984 and patented in 1987. Only three working prototypes of the jackhammer were built. Nonetheless, its distinctive aesthetics and futuristic design have made it a prop in action films, television programs, and video games. The jackhammer was designed by John A. Anderson, who formed the company Panker Industries in New Mexico. Anderson designed it based on his experiences using pump-action shotguns in the Korean War and believed he could create a better shotgun, finding reloading pump-action shotguns awkward and time-consuming. Reportedly, several foreign governments expressed interest in the design and even ordered initial production units once ready for delivery. However, export of the design was held up for production due to the United States Department of Defense testing, though the design was eventually rejected. Testing was done by HP White Labs in destructive tests, destroying two of the three produced. 
Those sent to HP White Labs reportedly had 4 pound, 1.8 kilograms of material removed with increased stamping instead of casting and a different, easier method of reloading. Thus, the sole surviving example is not indicative of what would have been an actual production model and is better considered a tool room prototype. Several dozen non-functioning examples were made from sheet tin, balsa wood, and clay in order to make working tool prototypes. Civilian cells were made impossible by the classification in the U.S. of the jackhammer as a machine gun and restrictions on machine gun manufacture enacted in 1986. Additionally, those foreign governments that did express interest were unwilling to finance development and final production. With no customers and little interest, Panker went bankrupt. And here is the end of this video. What do you think about these projects? Do they deserve to go bankrupt? I await your opinions in the comments section. Thanks for watching.